I'm Michelle Burrows. And I'm Rianne Rosen. And, and welcome, welcome to Sewing at Home. Today marks the resurrection of a lost tree that our ancestors did to make our lives successful. And now we have become so educated that we have lost the skills and labor that got us there. I am sure most of you always wanted to learn how to sew. Well, today is your lucky day. So go in those closets, dust off those sewing machines, grab a book and a pencil, and meet us right back here after this commercial break. Why do we do this? How can we prevent this from happening? Why is the Bahamas so dirty? Why do we do this to our Bahamas? Why do we do this to ourselves? Why? I want to welcome you to our first class in our sewing workshop series. I am your instructor for today. My name is Weyani Wilson, but everybody calls me Lemon. Assisting me in the back there is my mom, Michelle Burrows, author of the Sewing at Home book that teaches you step by step on how to make your own garments. Um, also, I have my dad and my brother that y'all met out front, Uzias and Uzias Jr. Burrows. Um, I have my sister, Christy and Cyan Burrows, right there, and a longtime student of mine, Tylitha Thurston, um, who will be assisting me today. Now, before I begin, let me just ask a question. What are the three basic needs that all humans need? Food. All right, so y'all don't get that so quick. Food. Clothes. Shelter. Okay, now this is how God did it in the beginning, you know. The first thing when he expelled Adam and Eve out of Eden, the first thing he said, by the sweat of your brow you shall eat bread. bread. So that's farming. The next thing he did for Adam and Eve, he made them clothes, which is sewing. And the last thing they did for themselves was create shelter, which is building. So today, we will be talking about the clothes, okay? Now before we get to that, let us just look at what's going on in our society today. And I could do it, I could draw it in a pie form for you guys. a big pie. Now, who do you think is getting a piece of our bohemian pie? There are several groups, several stakeholders in our society that is getting a piece of the pie. Does anyone have any idea on who is getting a piece of the bohemian pie? <laughs> Someone raise their hand. Oh. <laughs> Investors, okay. Anybody else? Currency. Say it. The politicians, that's a good one, uh huh. The rich people. Let me start off with the rich people, okay? Now, on top of the pyramid, we have the big boy companies, BB companies. And these are the persons who have generational businesses, those who had businesses for 20. 30, 40 years, we know who they are in the country. Next, we have, someone said, the politicians. They are getting a piece of the bohemian pie. Next up, we have the churches. They are also getting a piece of the pie. Right here, we have the web shop. It need to be bigger than that, eh? <laughs> Let me just do it just a little bit bigger than that. The web shops, okay? Underneath that, we have 
the banks. The bankers. And over here, we have the foreign companies. And we know who all they are, okay? Now, who do you think is getting the smallest, inty minty, tiny piece, inty minty piece of the pie? Us. The Bahamians. Any of y'all see something wrong with that? You don't see nothing wrong with that? Oh. <laughs> okay, so we have the big companies, we have the politicians, we have the churches, the web shops, the bankers, the foreigners, and then we have us. The poor bohemians getting the leftovers. And so we have to do something about that. That is the whole gist of having the sewing workshop because we have to learn how to sew our way to the top. Because remember, what you sow, you will reap. Okay? So let me just draw this a little bit over again. But I gotta change this. All right? So we need to be here. I don't mind the rest of everybody else because they're bohemians. This is bohemian companies. They're bohemians, 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 bohemians. Some. Some is bohemians. The banks. Okay? So this is where we need to be. And this is where we gotta get to. Okay? So with that said and done, what we can do to get to this is we have to work together. We must work together. So if you notice, I know many of you already noticed and said it already to me, is that we have one machine at each table. We also have one sewing kit at each table. And what that symbolizes is one unit that one cannot work without the other. We as Bohemians, we have to learn how to be our brother's keepers, and we have to learn how to work with whatever resources is handed to us, okay? So, that is why you have to share. We have to share and we have to work together. We got less than, less than two hours to complete this outfit, so we must know the machine firstly. Now the first thing in the machine, if you notice on the side of each of your machines, and mine is a little bit tangled up, is you have your power control, you have your power cord that you insert in the machine. Look on the side of it, it's on each machine. Right here I have the, the foot control, okay? This is the foot control, this is your ga gas and brakes of your sewing machine. Please, no hard heel women or hard men. I don't need no Speedy Gonzalez driving. I just want easy, easy driving, okay? When you wanna go fast, you press it a little harder. When you wanna go slower, you ease your foot off. And when you wanna stop, please, take your foot off the okay? The next thing we have on the side of your machine, we have the on and off switch. Y'all can press it on your machines. On and off. It should turn your machine on and off. Okay, you got that? Good. The next thing about that is your hand wheel. On every machine has a hand wheel and it moves your needles up and down. You get that? Above that we have your bobbin winder. And what this does, this puts on the thread which is on the top of your machine on your spool pin, it puts the same color thread onto the bottom of the machine, the bobbin in the bottom of each machine, okay? And you'll notice that your bobbin is right there. Don't take it out because we already have it threaded for you. Okay, but this is your bobbin case. And then you'll have a bobbin inside that is the same color as your top thread, okay? The next thing that we have to learn is our stitch. 
If you notice on each clothing that you're wearing, you have stitches. Okay, the regular stitch we're gonna be using today is three. Okay, so each machine should be on the number three. The two stitches we're gonna be using today is the straight stitch and the zigzag stitch on the stitch selector. And that's located, um, it's different machines, so on this one, you'll use A and you'll use C, and this is your stitch length right there. Every machine has a reverse button. This is very key in when, when you're beginning to sew, okay? When you sew, do not forget this, we must lock in our stitch, okay? You sew a little bit of your material and what you would do, you would hold down your reverse button so that it knots it. You wanna knot your um, thread at the beginning and as you continue sewing to the end, you wanna hold this down again so that it, it locks it in. So we must not forget, when we start to sew, we sew a little bit and what we're gonna do is gonna hold down the reverse button, okay? You got that? I'm not going too fast, right? Okay, good. Now, the next thing above here is your tensioner. Some, it has it on the side, and you need it between three and four. Some machines have it at four for good tension, so you could leave it there. Um, the next thing that you need to know, we have your presser foot underneath, right here. This is your presser foot. And you have your presser foot lifter. On some machines, it's on the side. On others, it's on the back. Your presser foot lifter, you would lift it. Don't worry about it, but just be gentle. <laughs> you can lift it up and down. You put it down when you want to hold down the fabric, and then the next thing, you would lift it up when you want to release your fabric. Remember, when you're sewing, you must keep the presser foot down. And when you stop, you lift this up, you make sure that your needle is up high like this when you're taking it out, okay? The next thing we need to know is how to thread our machine. And like I said, the machine is already threaded for you, but I'm gonna show you it twice, okay? The first step, and the machines are so easy, they have guys that can show you how to thread up your machine. Now, when you get your own machine, or if you have your own machine, you can look at your manual, or if you don't have your manual, you could also purchase the book that we have in the back there that has step-by-step -step on how to thread up your machine. But like I said, it's easy to do. You have guides that will show you. On each machine, it should have like um, some arrows. The first thing I do is put the thread spool on the spool pin. Some machines have it standing up, others have it laying down, okay? You see up there? Great. Now we have the lock, which is placed right here to keep it from moving, okay? The next step, we have step one. Notice there's a highlighted step one on the single machines, okay? On this machine, not so much. This is just showing you how to um, thread it up for the bobbin, but it also has numbers on that. But on the single machine, it has a highlighted one that shows you that you need to put it a different way in order to thread up your bobbin. On the regular, how to thread it up, you would follow number one, step one, Go down to step two, around the way, step three, and then we also have a guide that we use our hand wheel for. We make sure that we rise it up, and that's step four. We bring it down to step five. I make an L shape because I always remember lemon, that's me, and I put it here for our last guide. And for those who wear glasses, don't worry about that. All you have to do is make sure that you have the light on and that I kind of use my finger in order to see the hole. There's also a white part that helps you to see the hole. Some machines come with, um, with a threader that could thread up the machine, but if not, you could just snip this and put it inside the hole, okay? Again, let me just show you it one more time because if your thread comes out, you gotta be able to help yourself in putting it back on. One more time, we take the thread spool, we put it on the spool pin, whether it's laying down or it's standing up, we put our lock on it so it doesn't move. Okay, we follow the guides. Right here, step one, 